Hello, Ian. What's up, bud? What are you bud? doing? Well, I'm washing up a uh, my field knife. So I got oh. some uh, I got some cutting to do. Oh. What are we cutting? Well, we're going to start off um, the meal tonight. Is we're going to make a tomahawk steak. Ooh. Big old chunk of beef. And then we're going to uh, roast some red and golden potatoes sauteed up with some uh some onions that's love right there we're uh we're only gonna use one seasoning today and uh yeah we'll use it for both the uh the steak as well as the um as well as the uh potatoes so ooh, ooh. yeah we got the uh chimney stirred up got a little bit of smoke rolling oh so that'll be uh that'll be burning up here real good soon Nice and warm. By the time we get the uh, everything prepped up, that should be uh, good and hot for us. Ooh, so, perfect. Yeah. Stay tuned to the next step. Hot is good. Alright, well, I guess oh, I'm sitting there just like, well, I hope he doesn't fucking smell it. <laughs> like, otherwise he's gone. And... And uh, at first, I thought they did. I I swear. Oh. <coughs> oh, I gotta finish my story. Yep, you can finish it. One of the shenanigans up in the stands. Yep. <laughs> so you saw like the uh, the little nub and mom and brother, or. No, it was just two of them. Well, that's cool. I didn't see a lot of action this, uh, this week. Significantly more than we've seen in the past. Yeah. Dang, Ian. Massaging that meat real nice. What are we doing now? All right. So what we got is we have some golden potatoes. Ooh. We got some red potatoes. Yeah. And we got some onions. Ooh. Toss a little bit of olive oil in there. You know, just go ahead. It binds it all together. Put a little bit of a binder on this tomahawk steak. Ooh. And then always make sure you have a wet hand and a dry hand. Wet hands for handling everything. Dry hand is for handling your seasoning. Yes. Today, we're going to be using a little bit of splock. 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 Yum. Ian, what is this splog you speak of? I've never heard of it. So, so splog is a little something that I make. It's like an all-purpose seasoning. It's salt, pepper, garlic, and onions. Ooh. That sounds quite heavenly. Yep. All mixed together? All mixed together, equal parts. Ooh. So you might be asking yourself, what's the L? What is the L, Ian? Well, the L, L stands for the extra little bit of love we put into it. Ah. So. I can see how much you love that meat, with how tenderly and lovingly you're handling it. Making sure it's all equal amounts of Splog. Yep. It's a big chunk of meat. Hearty beef. So it can handle the hearty seasoning. Mm. And we're, it'll make a nice little crust for us. And then we'll do the same thing. Put some splog into the potatoes and everything else. Mix 
so up. Yeah. And then we'll uh, we'll go outside and we'll check on the uh, the grill. Make sure that chimney's going real good. All and right. We'll get all the stuff on the grill. All right. Looks like this chimney's ready to go. We're gonna set it up for two zone heating. One side is gonna be nice and hot. We'll do some searing on that side. And on the other side, it will be more indirect. And on that side, we'll more of a cook it. So we'll get this good and hot, and then we'll come back and get our searing starting. Open up our vents all the way. Let's marin. All right, we're gonna get a sear going on this tomahawk. First things first, is remember, you always eat with your eyes before you eat with your mouth. So, first thing we wanna do is get a good sear on the outside. Now give us some good grill marks, make it look pretty. Give a couple seconds on that side. But again, a good cross hatch. Make sure you're wearing some insulated gloves when you do this. That way you don't burn your hands. Good look to it. Flip it over. Same thing to this side. Two. Over. Ooh, that looks real good, Ian. Good cross patterns on this side now. Some good look to it. Move it over to the cooler side and do indirect heat from here on out with it. We'll do indirect heat with this as well as our potatoes. And toss it all just indirect heat and kind of keep an eye on the whole thing. Now the last thing we're gonna do is to make sure when you're cooking a big chunk of beef like this you're not really so much caring about what the outside looks like. You care about what the inside. All we're worried about is internal temperature. You want to figure about halfway up into it, shove that meat probe deep in, and we'll just kind of keep an eye on it. Look, right now we're sitting at 60 degrees, so we got we got some ways to go on it. So, what temperature does it need to get to, Ian? Well, depend on if you're a heathen or not. If you're a heathen and you want well done, well, this ain't your channel. But if you're uh, if you're looking for something a little more on the uh, the delicate side, we'll be pulling it off at a much earlier temperature. But we'll get this lid back on and start conserving some of that heat, and we'll come on back in. So stay tuned. I would check some progress. Oh yeah. Uh, 
at 116 now. So, making some good progress. <laughs> Ian covers you back up. All right, I think we're all, I think we're about to hit that internal temperature. We're gonna hit it. Like I said, it's not about the time, it's about the internals. Look at that. Hitting that perfect. Look at that. That bad boy looking good. Pull that in. Always make sure you let your meat rest. Don't just uh, don't just bring it in and start cutting. Always make sure you let it give it a little time to rest up. If you go and cut into it right away, the uh, if you cut into your meat right away, you lose all your juices, and you won't have it. Uh, you won't have very good looking at all. You lose it all. You lose all that, all that, the juice and all that. Everything's gonna run off of it. But yeah, look at that, everybody. Yum. That's what we're looking for. All right, we'll bring it inside. Let this thing rest.